Hi everyone, this is Catherine with The Crafty Kit and today we are going to do some ceramic painting. So um, in your kit, everyone would have received a little card, a little postcard with step-by-step -step instructions which brought you to this little QR code which brought you to this video. Um, also, it has just some minor steps but this event is really all about creativity and allowing the paint just to really flow and uh, for you to create a design that really comes from deep within. Um, also, there's um, a few little hints that say if you wanted to make a color a little lighter or darker or just make colors from scratch. Um, your kit does include a color palette that has every single color under the umbrella. You have brown, black, but let's say you run out of um, like a purple that you're using a lot of purple in your paint, you could always mix. Um, like a blue and a red to make a purple. So that is where this little chart comes in with a little, um, like a little cheat sheet. I could always use it for future. But for today, we are going to be painting this quote little dish where you could add on a little, um, like little trinkets. Um, you may have either received a dish, um, a terracotta planter, um, or a cup or like a mug, um, but same process overall. So we're going to go ahead and start to open up our paint con and start the painting process. So um, what I'm a big fan of is I like to layer, like, create like a base color um, before I start getting wild with like designs. Um, so I always focus on the front first and then I work on the back because that's something that you really won't get to see. And you also want to make sure that when you are painting, you're not going back and forth. Think about the drying time it takes between you're adding between you adding your layers. So for example, I'm going to stick with perhaps a white ground. You might choose to do a different ground. I'm actually I'm going to skip white. I'm going to do I'm going to get wild and see I'm getting called to do like an orange color. So with my paintbrush that is included in my pot, I just start to dip into my color and then I just start to smear it on. And you're just gonna basically cover. I'm gonna go ahead and cover my whole base with orange. You might choose to do either like a stripe of one color, a stripe of another. You could do whatever you wish. There's really no right or wrong way. If you do decide to do like two dimensional designs where it's like one color is on the background and then the other, let's say you're writing verbiage, like your initials, make sure that the background is dry. So that is where you may see that I am focused on just strictly painting my background first. This helps me kind of level set what I'm kind of aiming for. When you are painting, um, you want to make sure that you're spreading the paint, right? Make the best use of your paint. Just be careful with your surroundings when you're adding paint. Because I just happen to got some paint on my keyboard as I'm painting this, a little blooper there. But I'm just making sure that I'm spreading the paint around. going in. Um, one good thing to have also near you is like either a cup of water so that when you are transitioning into like let's say a different color um, you you could just dip your paintbrush into that cup of water and it will help you just kind of clear off that brush clean it off a bit so I'm going in as you see, I'm, I'm touching about the edges. I'm not touching the bottom because like the back of it yet, simply because I want to make sure that my front gets dry before I move on to the next step, which would be the back. So here I am finally covering up my front piece. Going to gently lay the back of it like that. And then I'm going to go in and paint the rest. Again, you could get a little creative, and maybe the back is black, or maybe the back is red, whatever you wish. There's no right or wrong way to paint. You're the artist today, so you are decorating to however you wish. 
make sure you are spreading the paint. Um, this is pigment acrylic paint, so there's really not much like coats I feel that you need to add. Again, if you wanted a darker coat, you can. I would suggest to allow the paint to fully dry before adding um, another coat so you could see how it's setting fully. So going in. And then trying to finish this up here. Have a little bit more to go before we check in and our front and how that's doing. I still have a whole lot of orange that is basically allowing me to cover up the whole trinket. Now let's say if you were to run out of orange, um, to make orange, you would just need the color yellow and the color red. But so far, we've painted a lot and I still have a decent amount left. And then, perfect, I filled it all in. So this is like my base. As you see, once I flip it, I have some edges that may have rubbed off on my on my table. I'm just going to go around and kind of clean those up. Perfect. So um, now that my front is drying up, I am going to in the meantime, going to clean off my brush just to make sure that it is um, free of the color orange that is on top of, um, which is on, on my paintbrush right now. <laughs> okay, so water here. I'm just gonna get my paintbrush and just dip it in here in my cup of water and just make sure that the paintbrush is nice and clean. So then we could go in and transition into our next color. Um, again, whatever color that you like, you just don't want to go ahead and dip, let's say, orange into like a blue because then you're making a whole new mix. So make sure that when you are changing colors, you are cleaning off that paintbrush to ensure that it's nice and clean. Because if not, then you're going to have some different colors kind of blended in there. Nice and clean and free from orange. So let's see. Um, the next color I'm going to go ahead and add. Let's see. I'm going to do some blue. And with my blue, I'm just going to go around and paste the edges. Again, I'm just being creative here. I have not thought through this design. I'm just allowing escaping life right now, work to really put this painting together, making it up as I go. And that's totally okay if you feel that way. If you need to look up some designs before you go ahead and start, feel free to do that. But I'm creating like this border. I chose not to do black because I didn't want it to look like Halloween. Um, so I chose this blue which is looking a little greenish with the mix of orange. That's totally okay. I think the combination is pretty unique. And that way it looks more of like a little quote. Okay. Again, I'm done with my, with my blues. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean off 
a paintbrush. I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a color white because I'm going to use some verbiage. I'm going to feel a little positive with my words. So I'm going to go ahead and um, write the word inspire. Of course, you don't have to write this. You could write whatever, you know, if you wanted to even write a word. But what I did want to do is show you all like the top layer. So as of right now, obviously my paint is still drying, but um, you're gonna, you could start to see some of the white kind of stand out on top of the orange um, because the orange is still pretty damp um, because I didn't allow the paint to dry during class, um, during this recording, just so you can see. Um, if you are adding a second like layer or a secondary color on top of like a darker color, you definitely need it to fully dry because this is what you're going to come against. So it's kind of like a, a purposeful blooper, if that makes sense. Um, I definitely suggest that you all do allow the paint to dry in, dry in between. Um, because as you can see on, on my verbiage right here, it is, um, it's pretty transparent. So you do need a, a second coat. So I'm gonna go in just because you can't see the letters. You go in and kind of just continue to add layers of that white until it, the white is more visible. I'm gonna use like the tip of my paintbrush. See how I didn't go straight down. So if you get your paintbrush and then just get the tip and then just gently use the tip to kind of paint down and refill with white paint as needed. and you just continue to apply your white. Now with the second coat, it's starting to look a little bit more visible. Well, the white is. <laughs> um, again, my orange is still a little damp, so that's why it may look um, a little, like it, it, the white isn't really as bright, but I kind of like it that way. Uh, so say Madison stores, and you're like, I don't like this design. How can I get rid of it? Guess what? You can't go at, back and erase it. All you could do <laughs> really is paint over it. So you want to paint over it while the paint is dry again, not while it's wet. So for example, my husband's worse and I'm like, uh, I got this little line over here and I don't like it and I want to erase it. Well, you can't erase it, but what you can do is paint over it. So for example, um, I'm just going to use black as a solve to go in and maybe I'm going to switch up my design and perhaps 
paint the bottom black. But again, I really encourage you all to allow your creativity to flow. I know sometimes it's very hard to escape and really like, well, how can I figure out my creativity? Um, just pick up a paintbrush, pick up color and just kind of start smearing the paint. Um, it will literally just start to come Maybe it's just, maybe your creativity is just painting it solid and then taking a break and then allowing some more time for you to come up with what you want to paint it. Just don't overthink it and don't just stare at it. If you feel it's not coming to you right now, just either just focus on the base, give it some time, and then come back to it either after you take like a break Grab some water, some coffee, whatever is your beverage of choice. You could come back and just continue painting, but just don't rush it, right? Arts and crafts should not be about overstressing and thinking it's about the escape. And remember this artwork is unique to you. So, don't judge yourself or don't judge your colleagues or anything. Um, this is what makes this art piece unique and be proud to showcase it. It's gonna bring you to the moment of when you were still. For example, I have every point where I just wanna keep on picking at my, my little quote ceramic because I started to add black and now I'm like, ah, oh, there's some edges that do not look good, but that's okay. I'm not gonna let it get to me. I'm just gonna finish it off. Okay, it's not perfect. I'm okay with it. So that's if you wanted to go around and change um, anything, you didn't have to choose black. I chose black because I just, and something's calling me to do something with like Halloween, orange and black. But um, here is my Inspire. I will go back and um, add a little bit more color to the front piece of art, um, to my verbiage, just so that it stands out. But I hope that you really all really enjoy just the time to escape. Um, if you ever wanted to add like an agent, where it makes it more waterproof and um, if, for example, the mugs, right? If you're gonna be drinking out of them, I would suggest getting some Mod Podge. Um, this was not included in your kit, but it's just really a waterproof like gloss agent that then it's like a clear solution and you would just add your, almost looks like a glue. You add your paintbrush and then just apply it right on top of your ceramic. It doesn't have to be for the mug, but for any other item that you choose to, um, that you decided to paint, like for example, the terracotta planter, you could definitely add that right on top and it will help um, sustain the paint onto the ceramic. But other than that, you don't need to have a um, Mod Podge. Your um, paint will just work as just fine with what you have. All right, well, I hope you all enjoyed today's class and enjoy crafting.